The core aspects of a point-and-click adventure game are normally to tell a story as well as use puzzles as a way for players to interact with the world around them. Gadget, Passes Future, foregoes the puzzle aspect and focuses on telling an odd story full of confusion, espionage, and train travel. Gadget is more of an interactive experience in a sort of, I guess I might say, visual novel style, using static images and cutscenes to show off its world. It plays like Myst in the sense that you move around the world in the same way, interacting with objects. Unlike Myst, there are more human interactions, even if the conversations are one-sided. When the game starts, you wake up in a hotel. You then leave to meet with your boss named Slow Slop in the lobby. You are given the task to find a missing scientist named Horse Lover and get on a train to your next location. Already you can tell there's something off just by the characters' names. As you travel across the vaguely Eastern European country, you meet new people as well as bump into some of the same people as they travel the train system. The main gameplay loop is sometimes you will have to talk to a certain person, do a specific task, or just go back and forth in a certain section before you can continue on. The latter of which can be a little annoying when you have no idea what will move the game forward. It is a linear experience with little variation on what you have to do. But there is a possibility to miss dialogue with certain people if you don't look for them, don't care, or talk to a person that triggers a cutscene. There is a section near the end that's sort of like a maze, but after fumbling around the tunnel system, you'll eventually get out. Which I found to be an odd gameplay inclusion in a game with mostly linear movement. The general feelings I got while playing this game were those of confusion, wondering if what people were telling me was true, or even if my character knew what they were doing. Sitting down in front of weird machines and doing whatever tasks people called on me to do. I felt a little creeped out by the surrealness of the people, locations, and the droning or rhythmic ambient noise. The general aesthetic was one of unease. There were familiar things in the world, but they were always off in some sort of way. Primarily the people with their uncanny valley appearance, stiffness, dead eyes, and because of how the game works, freakishly sudden movements. This goes double for the child you see at the beginning and all throughout, but I feel like talking about him further might give away the mystery from checking this game out, as all I can say is it gets weirder. The other things that felt familiar but different in the world were the inventions, which is appropriate as the original title for Gadget is Gadget, Invention, Travel, and Adventure. The machines that you use or travel on are exaggerated World of Tomorrow type of 1920s art style, giving off a sense of art deco and, as I learned of, a sort of diesel punk look. Rounded 1950s style TV monitors, weird looking planes, and slick trains. What adds to this disquieting nature of the world is how it is presented. Almost everything in this game is presented as still images that change when you move in a different direction, click on an object, or sometimes when talking to people. Clicking on a door that suddenly opens to a creepy looking person just standing there staring forward is eerie. Clicking on a person who is facing one way and then with a jolting click faces you makes it feel a little unreal. With the 1997 four-disc release of Gadget Passes Future, they improved upon graphics and animations from the original 1993 single-disc release. I do have a demo from a magazine software disc I used to play when I was a kid, and there were a few differences between what is shown in the 1994 demo and what appears in the four-disc release. The main differences right off the bat are a smaller resolution, less lighting effects, more pixelated quality, the cutscene near the end of the demo is in black and white, and a transition between the hotel and the train station is instant instead of playing a cutscene. There's also a dialogue and character change for the room across the hall in the hotel, but I'm not sure if this was changed for the demo purposes or was changed in the later release. With this updated version, you can see the differences in what they did to improve the atmosphere. This particular area in the hotel lobby had its lighting changed, and it makes this simple scene of returning your keys creepier than before. On the audio side, I already mentioned the droning ambience, but I get the impression that each area has a sort of sense of being alone. While there are people in the world, you keep seeing the same few people all throughout the game and no one else. It's odd to go through a train station that should be bustling with people, but is practically empty. There are some sorts of music at parts, but they're either odd, depressing, 
or give off a sense of uneasiness. The highest levels of dedication towards sound design were the rhythmic differing sounds of the trains and the mechanical sounds of the other vehicles and equipment. The thing that stood out because of its underuse was the voiceover work. The only instances being at the beginning, on the phone and the radios, and then finally at the end. A numbness lingers. It's all over now. It's distinct because the dialogue with everyone else is in text. Gadget was always a game I was intrigued by, even at a young age, because its demo left me wanting more, wondering what the game was actually about. I only got the game a few years ago because I was going through my old demo discs and wondered once again what the game was about. The interesting thing about Gadget is I don't know many people who would know about this game, but while I was looking for some podcasts, I found a two-part interview with Guillermo del Toro on Ken Levine's Irrational Interviews. On the second part, they end up talking about Bioshock and Guillermo del Toro asked Levine if he had ever played Gadget. Barton Fink influenced the game that I adored for many years that, that existed on CD-ROM and to me is one of the pinnacles of, of the early, early games called Gadget. Did you ever play that? No, I mean, I'm certainly very familiar and very inspired by, you know, The Shining and Barton Fink and Blue Velvet and things like that, but I actually haven't played that game, interestingly. I think that game, in my opinion, influenced, uh, first of all, Dark City, Alex Proyas's, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then The Matrix. It's an incredible game the system is primitive now, but I was very curious about it. I mean, I, some of your influences you put in the forefront, and like I think you should, and I, I, I do too, but some of them uh, I thought could be more obscure, and I wanted to ask you about them. Hearing someone as well known as Guillermo del Toro talk about such an obscure game kind of shot nostalgia through me. I mean, at that point I had only played the demo, but that short demo left an impression in my mind. So I bought it, and boy was I surprised at how weird it actually was. Gadget Past This Future is an interesting experience, be it one without much gameplay. The oddities of the game's story are kinda worth it if you want to try and figure it out, but be ready to be confused, as Gadget doesn't take a traditional approach to storytelling. I will admit though that a few of the cutscenes can be boring, as some are long and don't do much other than show off the game's early 90s 3D technology. So be prepared for a slow two-hour experience telling a story of government conspiracy interspersed with psychedelic scenes. If what you've seen or heard has interested you, Gadget Past the Future for the Mac and PC can be found online going for around 10 bucks when I last saw it on Amazon. There was an iOS port of the game back in 2011, but when I went on the App Store it wasn't there. For the PC, I was able to get it running on Windows 7 64-bit, but there were some technical issues so I used a Windows 98 virtual machine for recording purposes. Thanks for watching. Any comments, likes, or dislikes on this video or any of my other videos would be appreciated. By clicking these annotations, you can check out a few of my reviews. Also, if you want to get in contact with me, message me on YouTube or Twitter.